Right. Uh, player to watch for Wales in the Six Nations, Josh Navidi. Um There's a lot of injuries and suspensions going into the Six Nations for all sides. He is um, the Welsh player to watch for me. He had a great autumn. Um, they have a few issues out in, in, in the back row with Warburton, their captain, well, Warburton being out. Uh, Falatau not being 100%. He is back playing, but he's not 100% yet. And can Tipperick last the full 80 minutes consistently at international level? Because he normally comes off the bench to be an impact player. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Navidi could probably play second row if he had to. Um, he is one of the few players that I think consistently has been good. Um, and he's, he's fresh to the international scene, so you know it's a chance for him to put his marker down for the World Cup next year. Uh, and the summer and the summer tests and any future Lions places that may come up in years to come. I honestly believe he is one to watch, not just for the Six Nations, but for the future. And it, it makes it interesting because every side at the moment has got injury problems. Uh, <coughs> France has got injury problems at fly half um, and suspensions in, in for various players and injuries. Lopez, Camilo Lopez. Uh, Wales are obviously missing t- several fly halves in Bigger and um, Priestland for various reasons. England are missing 15 players, including injured and suspended. 15, including Haskell, who's going to miss the first two. That's, fifth, that's a whole starting lineup missing for England. Uh, Ireland are missing a few. Uh, Italy, um, I think, are missing a few players as well through injury. So already. Scotland are missing players already before we even start the tournament there's at least I think two full squads of players out injured or suspended or unable for selection for various reasons that you know this is why I said in my last Six Nations video this is going to be the closest tournament to call because you know two or three full international sides if you add all the injured and suspended players and unable for selection together that is you could field another three national sides there starting 15 so that is how many players are out um for whatever reason, or not fully fit enough yet to start the, the tournament. That's a lot of players. So um, this is where I think Josh Navidi is going to come into his own. There's there's um, there's going to be tightly contested games. Um, looking at the weather outside, if the weather's like that in a week and a half's time, handling can, he's very good with the handling on, on the ball. So with weather being as it is, changeable, snow some days, rain the next, strong winds. Uh, we've had a lot of snow this winter, we've had a lot of rain, we've had um, a lot of frost. So... Handling is going to be interesting, and I'm looking at the window now. It is absolutely chucking it down, and the winds are quite strong. So depending on you know the conditions, that could have a part to play. Um, but he's definitely a player to watch for, him, for me. Uh, and we'll have to see how he performs. I honestly think he'll grab it with both hands, grab the ball by both by the horns, and he'll do really really well. And going forward, he not only will be a future, I think, possible Welsh captain, and I honestly believe that. I think he's a future lion as well, British and Irish lion, um, and he might be just Wales' best player. I, he is my player to watch because, well, with so many injuries and suspensions for all sides, it's it's going to be a very very interesting tournament. No one's fielding their strongest side at the moment, and uh, it's a chance for these 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 new players coming on, these fringe players, to put their hand up not only for this tournament but for the World Cup next year. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll have some more videos for you soon.